Okay, so truth be told, I've been saving this brand new walleye rod for a long time. So let's pull it out of the package. TFO, professional walleye, six foot six, medium. Now, we're gonna make some uh, modifications. We've gotta have your eyes and your ears. Well, there's a little bit of nothing. So now my six foot six rod is more like a uh, five foot nothing. So tomorrow I'm gonna fish in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado at a high elevation reservoir. Now we've taken this six foot six walleye rod and we've essentially chopped it down to about a five foot rod. Now the reason we do this is because we're going jigging for lake trout. And this is gonna help us substantially with our hook sets having a stiffer rod. But I didn't invent this technique. I actually learned it from another prominent Colorado guide. And I want to pass it to him to tell you about it right now. You know, over my career, I've really found a passion in targeting and chasing giant lake trout. We created the topwater bite that we brought to in fishermen and so many other techniques to increase success on huge lakers. But this is probably one of the biggest things that's increased that success. Huge lakers, you think they're going to be aggressive, but they bite lighter than anything you've ever seen. These fish actually invert on the bait. They suck it in from above uh, and the take is lighter again than anything you've ever felt. Uh, by the time the average angler feels the take, the fish is spitting it out. By the time you get that rod swinging and get that hook set tried, uh, usually that fish spits it, leading you to an unsuccessful situation. I want to talk about something that we do uh, that has absolutely revolutionized our hook set and put so many more fish in the boat. Uh, I personally am all about using a spinning rod for these big lakers, but you can use a casting rod as well. So whatever you choose to go with. I personally have a cleaner wrist action and I have better technique when jigging using a spinning rod. I use a casting rod, I turn my hand so my wrist is up. Uh, and I have a slower technique. As where my wrist is sideways or even down, I can use more wrist action. I get a cleaner technique, leading to more takes, leading to more fish. So I use a spinning rod, but whichever rod you want to use, you want to do this technique. So you're going to take that rod, you're actually going to put line on it, and you're going to load the rod. So load that rod completely, and you're going to see where the true action starts on that rod. You're going to see where that rod's action and speed hit the backbone. So on that rod, it's right at that fifth guide. So I am now I'm literally going to take a Dremel tool. I'm going to chop that rod right there at that fifth guide. I'm going to put an in cap guide eliminating the action of that rod. What that does now when that Laker grabs that bait, the second I feel that take, when I go to hook set, instead of wasting pressure seconds and wasting all of that slow load to try to get that hook set, that Laker feels that and he's spitting the bait. When it's chopped, I go straight to backbone. When I set that hook, I am delivering punch right to that mouth. I'm burying the hook and I'm landing that fish every time. So again, I have one right here that I've already chopped. I load that rod, it's straight backbone. There's no load. Uh, so again, my increase on takes and success goes through the roof. You've got to try that. We are out here today at a Colorado high altitude mountain lake. We are fishing for lake trout today, and we're gonna to try to apply some jigging techniques to catch big lake trout. We use that professional walleye rod that we chopped down in my garage. You listen to Nate tell you a little bit about why we do that. Now I wanna show you it in the actual process of catching a fish and how it'll help you keep more fish on the line and put more fish in the boat. How does it get any better than this? Let's get fishing. Thank you. 
All right, so I just want to show you what these fish look like on the graph. Here is like basically what a what a fish typically is going to look like on the sonar. Um, you can see, you know, he's kind of looking at the bait. Maybe he's like flaring his gill, but he hasn't come down and actually hit it. Um, here's another example right here where the fish is kind of coming off bottom and then who knows if he kind of swims away or whatnot, but his, his signature kind of disappears uh, right here. Um, and then as we've, we've kind of gone, we've had like smaller marks. Right now there's another fish down there. Uh, this is that fish. Uh, you can see it on down scan as well. Just that little, that little blob right there. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what fish are looking like on the graph. Um, and you can also tell if a fish is biting. Um, here's another couple big fish here rolling through the screen. You can tell if a fish is biting your jig or if they're going for it. If they come and they meet the bottom and the bottom is really blocked out, uh, usually what that means is that they've, they've come all the way down to eat your bait. There's a couple really nice fish right there. You can see one on top is much, much bigger than the one on bottom. Um, so yeah, we're, we're definitely in the fish right now. We're in about uh, 35 foot depth. Uh, water temperature is 56.3. And uh, we're just getting after these, these lake trout. But uh, I've got my down scan, I have my sonar, and then this is bottom lock. So this is zero, one, two, three, and four feet above bottom. So now we've got another fish coming in here and that fish is in and out so came in maybe and then disappeared made a u-turn or whatever um, if that fish had come down hard and met this orange with the bottom uh, that would have been a good indicator of the fish maybe taking the bait or striking so we're jigging right now in 35 feet of water and i'm just gonna point my gopro down so you can kind of see what's going on here go a little further so Basically, I got my, my bait on the bottom right now. I'm just doing some hopping technique. Nothing crazy, not moving it too far off the bottom. Just kind of hopping it around. Some people fish like super vertical. Um, I've been told that moving the bait around the boat um, just kind of gives it turns, gives it a little more action. Uh, stuff that, you know, lake trout kind of key in on. So that's what we're doing. We're just kind of running the bait around just doing these like short little hops not going super high not doing anything too crazy these are big fish they've been in here a long time uh just kind of not trying to show them anything that's unnatural okay i'm going to big green i'm gonna do that rainbow okay down yeah look yep that's a good one i got something down there looking at me I saw something weird and then i looked away oh i thought that was a hit it wasn't All right, guys, we are out here. We got a nice fish on, really nice fish on. And uh, there's his run, nice lake trout. Oh yeah, this is a good fish. Woo! This is why you want that short stubby rod. You see how I'm able to broomstick him and I'm able to keep this in the top of his jaw. So we got a really nice grip on him right now. There's some bubbles right there. Those bubbles, are we recording on the upper? We got a great fish on. Now he's gonna make a couple runs. Here's one right here. So I, I know you're doing your, your instructional thing. Yep. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I think that's a sign. All right, this guy's stout. You always wanna keep pressure on the fish. I'm trying to keep that, that bait constantly in the top of his jaw. There we go, check that run out right there. 
He is not happy, man. Big bubbles. Big bubbles. This fish is not happy. Ooh. Gonna have to tighten the drag just a hair. See if we can get him to come back up. Just jigging uh, big tube jigs on the bottom here, uh, but cutting these rods down and making them a little less sensitive, uh, giving me the ability um, to have more power in the hook set is what's keeping this fish pinned and has probably got him fairly, fairly decently hooked in the jaw. He's gonna come up here and ooh, we got a big fish. Nice, nice, nice fish. Spitting up a bunch of bubbles right there. You can see those. Bunch of bubbles right there. Oh, great fish. Big fish. John's gonna get the net here. We got a nice fish on. Nice fish on. Dinosaur. Here we go. Nice color. Big fish. Gonna roll him into the net. And we got him. Woo! Yeah, just leave him down in the water. And that is how you do it, folks. Oh, give me some slack in this line. We just caught a big fish on this TFO Walleye Professional Series rod. It is a six foot six medium, and we chopped that end off, and it gave us a lot more power in the hook set, and we were able to land this giant lake trout. We're gonna bring it in the boat right now and give you guys a, a little bit of a show here, show you what we got. Just an absolutely gorgeous lake trout here. Colorado high elevation lake trout on the TFO Professional Walleye Series rod. Absolute tank. Look at this fish, beautiful color, great size. That's what we want. Great fish. Hey bud. Yeah, boom, Ooh. high five. So again, cutting down that TFO Professional Walleye Series rod and making it more of a broomstick gave me the ability to stick this fish tight and keep him pinned. And the jig just popped out as soon as we got him in the net. So that's the importance of keeping that, that nice broomstick style uh, rod in your hand, uh, something about five feet long to help uh, knock these fish down. So huge shout out to Nate Zielinski. Check out his YouTube channel. Uh, he's where I learned the technique. And uh, if you guys saw the beginning of the video, you'll see uh, how, how he talks about uh, cutting the rod and where to actually cut a rod and what, what kind of uh, walleye rod you want to start with. But uh, great fish. We're going to give this guy some air, get some picks, and then let her go. All right, so we have this big fish in the net here. It's important to have a deep conservation net uh, so that you can keep them in the water. They can breathe uh, in between your pictures or whatever you need to do to take measurements if you're gonna get a replica. Um, what I'm gonna do is bring this fish back into the boat, show you him one more time, and then we're gonna let him go. He's doing just fine, super healthy. And uh, yeah, this is uh, the first fish of the year on a TFO professional walleye rod that's been hacked down into a lake trout rod. This is a rod you can get for $100 cut down at a lake trout rod and catch fish just like this. Um, incredible. What a fun time out here. This is just uh, one of the most ex amazing fish uh, that you can catch in Colorado. This has been my dream fish as a kid. Uh, this is the fish that eluded me for so many years and uh, I'm just proud to be getting into them and having a blast. So um, anyway, let's bring this fish in one more time and let her go. Feisty, healthy, ready to go. This fish is gonna go 35 inches all day long. Amazing catch. We're gonna go ahead and let her go. So what you wanna do, lower the fish into the water, get the head down, hold on to the tail, you'll get those mighty kicks, and then she's ready to go. Well, gone, gone and away. TFO conventional fishing rods, getting it done here in high elevation lakes, Colorado, catching giant lake trout, getting wet, having a blast. Don't miss out on our next subscriber giveaway 10,000 for this TFO Tactical Elite Bass Combo. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and also click the bell icon to receive notifications when I post. 
As always, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, click the like button below. If you have suggestions of videos you want to see in the future, go ahead and leave a comment, and we'll see you in the next one. Now enjoy these fish.